I want to just ask you to just open your Bibles to Philippians, the fourth chapter, and be prepared to walk with us through the text today. Just before we go into that, I want to thank Pastor Hall for the invitation. And I want to just say that I'm happy to be with each of you here at New Life Fultondale. I also see a number of my friends and people that I've known over the years, even classmates, and very happy to see each one of you. I want to just ask that you bow your heads with us as we pray. Heavenly Father, in this hour, I ask that you would speak to us. Please make your will known to us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now I'm gonna need to share my screen. You should you should be there. you should be able to share it. Okay, then just a second. All right, share screen. Let me go back again. I'm sorry. And. Uh, because I want you to be able to walk with me through this today. Okay. All right. My title today is The Lord is Near. The Lord is Near. You heard our scripture from Philippians, the fourth chapter, verses four through nine and verse 13. Some years ago, many years ago, in fact, a young father and husband buried his wife and mother of one child. After the funeral, they greeted the people who were there, who came by to see them. And then that evening, as he and his young daughter, not even school age, got ready for bed, his daughter said, Daddy, can I sleep in the room with you tonight? He said, why? She said, I'm scared. He says, sure. And he made a place for her next to his bed. And told her she could sleep there. He turned, they prayed, he turned the lights off. She began to cry. He said, what's wrong, baby? She said, Daddy, are you near me? He said, yes, I'm near you. He said, but I'll roll over and I'll come over to the side of the bed right next to you. She said, thank you, Daddy. He then lay there when he heard her again. She said, Daddy, I'm still scared. He said, what, what's wrong? He said, she says, Daddy, is your face turned toward me? 
He said, yes, my face is turned toward you. She said, thank you, daddy. Now I can sleep. Friends, there are times in life when we need to know that the Lord is near. And when we need to know that his face is turned toward us. And if there was ever a time that we needed to know that, it is now. Right now, many of you have had loved ones to die from the pandemic or for other reasons. Many of us have gone through some very stressful times, caution stress, knowing people who were sick and many other loss of jobs and many other problems. To each of us today, regardless of the problems that we're going through, God wants you to know that when you are going through a tough time, he is near and he will help you experience peace in the tough times. Philippians 4. Verse five says, the, let your gentleness be evident to all the Lord is near. You know, I read this text many times, many, many, many times, mostly started with verse six, be anxious about nothing. But recently I was reading the text and went back to verse five, and notice the four words, the Lord is near. King James says, the Lord is at hand. It struck me. And I had to just drop anchor, as it were, and just stay on that word, that, that, that sentence, and get the lessons and blessings that God has for us out of it. And I just want to share with the, them with you today because the Lord is near. He is near to give you peace in stressful times. Just a second. I'm trying to make this thing work. He is near to to give you peace in stressful times. Now the word, the Lord is near, has two, it can be interpreted two ways. First, the Lord's presence is near. The Lord's presence is near. Friends, even though God is after, well, back in the Garden of Eden, God was with Adam and Eve. They were had face-to-face -face communication. But when they sinned, he had to expel them from the garden. But even though he expelled them from the garden, God loved them and he loves us so much. He said, I still want to be close to you. So over and over with, in the Bible, we see him seeking to be close to us. When he brought the children of Israel, he, well, he walked with, with Enoch. He, uh, he, taught, he walked with Noah. And when he brought the children of Israel out of, out, of, uh, out of Egypt, he said, let them build me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. In the book of Psalms, he's the shepherd psalm that says, the shepherd who says, yea, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will be with you. His rod and his staff will comfort you. 
David also says, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to that rock that is higher than I. Friends of mine, it's a blessing to know that God is near enough that when our hearts are overwhelmed, we can run to Jesus. We can hasten to his throne. In Jesus, he became Emmanuel, God with us. And then when Jesus left, he sent the Holy Spirit to the comforter to be with us because he wants to be near to us. Friends of mine, during this pandemic, during the time that you are going through now, even though you may, may find it difficult to sense his presence, the Lord is near. His presence is near you. He walks with you. He's willing to talk with you. He embraces you. He holds you. His, he is, his face is turned toward you. But the Lord is near also means Christ's coming is near. Prophecy tells us his coming is near. When we look at Daniel 2, we see that we are down in the toenails of the image. When we look in Daniel 7 and 8, we see that we are in the final, in the final beast there, in the final portions of that prophecy. When we look at Daniel 9, we see that we are down in the judgment. When we look, and then when we look at Jesus, when Jesus was here, he promised. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. If, if, if I go, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. He's coming again. He's coming for you. He's coming for me. And his coming is near. Signs all tell us that he's coming again. The stars have fallen. The sun has turned to darkness. The moon has turned to blood. There are many other signs that we see today that are, in, that are becoming more and more intense with time and that let us know Jesus is coming again. Luke 21, 27 to 28 says, at that time they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin to take place, stand up and lift up your head because your redemption is drawing nigh. Friends, as we see the times, as we see the things that are coming, we, we know that he's, he is near and we are told to lift up our heads for our redemption draweth nigh. Romans, the 13th chapter, verse 11 and 12 says, and do this, knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. Friends of mine, Jesus coming is nearer than we first believed. There was a young boy who woke up in the middle of the night, came running into his daddy, daddy's room, parents' room, and, he, and they said, son, what's wrong, what's wrong, what's wrong? He was excited. They said, he said, mama, daddy, I just had a dream. And I need to tell you about it. They said, what did you dream? He said, it was, I saw a clock and it had a large face and on it, there was a hand pointed at 13 o'clock. They said, son, there is no such thing as 13 o'clock. It stops at 12 midnight. They said, he said, mama, daddy, I saw it. And I know what I saw. And when I saw it, I realized that it's later than it's ever been before. Friends of mine, the tide, the night is far spent. It's later than it's ever been before. 
The day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Paul says, the Lord is near. His presence is near. His coming is near. Now, in the context of this short sentence, he gives six imperatives that we need to take note of today. In light of the fact that Jesus is near, in light of the fact that the Lord's coming is near, he says, number one, rejoice in the Lord always. Number two, let your gentleness be evident to all. Number three, don't worry about anything. Number four, pray about everything. Five, think good things. Six, do the right thing. Let's look at them. Number one, Philippians 4, verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Friends of mine, as we see how tough things are, because we know that God is near, because we know that his coming is near, we can rejoice. We can lift up our heads because our redemption is drawing nigh. Yes, we see, the, we see the police brutality. Yes, we see the rise of hate and, 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 and hate crimes in America. Yes, we see the many other things that cause our hearts to tremble. But when we see these things, we can still rejoice in the Lord always because sooner we'll be done with the troubles of the world. We're going to live with God. No more weeping and wailing. No more because we're going to be with God. Verse 5 says, let your gentleness be evident to all. Now I have to look this one up. Let your gentleness be made known to all. What, 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 what is he speaking about here? What he, and the, the King James says, let your moderation be evident to all, known to all. What this means is do not, in, I mean, let people see your ability to be flexible. Let it be evident that you don't have to have your own way. You see, at the beginning of this chapter, you had two ladies who, who were named Euodias and Syntyche. They couldn't get along because they had to have their own way. Paul says, when we recognize that Jesus is coming again, it's too late to be insistent on our own way. We need to find some way to be able to get along. I was at a work a workplace some year, many years ago, and I heard a lady speaking to her supervisor in a way that very, that just surprised me. In fact, I had to just step out because I knew that I was not supposed to hear what I just heard. The supervisor. The, she was telling the supervisor something that she wanted to do. And the supervisor said, no, that's not the way we do it here. And the employee said, that's the way I do it because I get my way wherever I am. That's when I said, it's time for me to leave. Friends, that when we recognize that Jesus is coming again, when we recognize that he is near and he hears what we see, say, and his face is turned toward us and he witnesses our attitudes, 
We need to be willing to make compromises. We need to be willing to, to, to uh, be humble. We need to be willing to not insist on our way because Jesus is coming again. Verse 6 says, do not be anxious about anything. Another way of saying that is, don't worry about anything. And these next four are going to just tell you how to handle things because things are the things that trouble us. He says, do not be anxious about anything. You know, many, some of you remember Elder Dudley, who used to be the president of the South Central Conference. He used to say, I don't worry about anything that God doesn't worry about. <laughs> Friends of mine, that's a good thing to do. We need to decide that we are not going to worry about anything, not to be anxious about anything, but to take everything and trust God in the midst of it. Then the next says, but in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. The fourth imperative is present your requests to God or pray about everything. Now it says, but in everything situation by prayer and petition and with thanksgiving, present your request to God. What he is really saying is when you present your requests, do it through prayer. Do it. With, inter with as a petition and do it with a thankful heart. Some years ago, my uncle passed and I was devastated. I didn't know how to handle it. And they asked me to preach. I had to preach my uncle's funeral to my mother and to my aunts, and to my uncle, two other uncles. I couldn't get my head together. I talked to my cousin Jerry and she said, Steve, when you're stressed like this, take Philippians four, six, and seven and decide that you will be anxious about nothing. Then pray about it. She says, when you pray about it, talk to Jesus about it. Then we ask him for what you need and thank him for what you have done. And when you do that, God will come and give you a peace that transcends all understanding. I went outside into her backyard and I did exactly as she said. I prayed, I talked to God, I let my request be made known to God. I asked him to help me not to be worried, not to be anxious. And friends, a peace came over me. And when that peace came over me, it changed me. And I wanna tell you that whatever you're going through today, whatever is troubling you today, that if you will decide if you will ask God, I don't want to worry about anything, but I want to ask that you will give me a peace. Just talk to him about what's going on. Ask him for what you need. Thank him for what he's doing. Thank him that he's near to you. Thank him that he's coming again soon. And then a peace will come over you. Imperative number five, he says, finally, brethren and sisters, whatsoever, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. There it is. Think the best things. Friends, nothing can take our minds down a rabbit hole or into depression, or into fear, or anxiety, like 
thinking the wrong things. When your mind begins to send you in a way of stress, think the best things. Somebody said, well, you know, I, it was true. Yes, it may be true, but is that true thing noble? Is it right? Everything true is not pure. Is it lovely? Is it admirable? Is it excellent? Is it praiseworthy? Friends, if you can't think of anything who meets all of those, that meets all of that, think about Jesus because he is the truth. He is noble. He is righteous. He is pure. He is lovely. He is admirable. He is excellent. He's praiseworthy. So if you can't think about a thing, think about who? Think about Jesus. And he, Isaiah 26 says, he, you, he will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. The last imperative, whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put into practice. Friends, the final imperative is do the right thing. As we see Christ coming, as we recognize that we are walking in his presence, that we live in his presence, and as we recognize that he's coming again soon, it's important that we do the right thing. We don't know the day and hour that he's coming. We don't know when our last day may be on this earth. But if we live, do the right thing, we can know that we will please him and we will walk acceptably in his presence. Our thoughts and our words will be acceptable in his presence. And if he should come today or whenever he comes, we will be able to look up and say, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him and he will save us. Somebody says, Pastor, you said a whole lot of that we are to do. You said that we need to rejoice always. We need to let our gentleness be made known to our men, uh, to all people. You said, do not do, you said, worry about no thing. Pray about everything. Think the best things and do the right things. But pastor, I'm weak. I struggle in some of these things. How can I do it? Paul says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Friends of mine, whatever your struggle today, Jesus says, come unto me and I will give you rest. How does he give you that rest? He says, you've been struggling trying to do it yourself. He says, let me do it. Let me go to bat for you. Decide that you're not going to try to do it anymore, but that you're going to just let me do it. He says, then you will come to the place that you will be able to say, it is no longer I that lives, but Christ that lives in me. I will do all of these things through you. Friends, when we decide to do these, and when we remember that Christ is near us, that the Lord is near, and that his coming is near, the Bible says, gives in this same section, promises peace two times. He says, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And verse 9b says, and the God of peace will be with you. So God's peace will keep your mind and God, uh, and the God of peace will be with you. He will be near you. He will walk with you. He will talk with you. He will lay beside you in your bed and turn his face toward you. Friends, I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that we serve a God who wants to be near us. What about you? 
if you're happy that God wants to serve you, means that that is that God is happy to be with you, us, and you are happy that He is with us. I just want to ask that you would just today, just wherever you are, just say, thank you, Jesus, for being near me. Thank you for being my God. Thank you for the good news that you come in again. And then, Lord, I want to thank you that through Christ, you can help me. Rejoice always and not complain. Let my gentleness be made known to all men, evident to all men. Worry about no thing. Pray about everything. Think the best things and do the right things so I can have peace. Now, there may be somebody here today that wants these, but you have not accepted Christ as your personal savior. And you would like to accept Christ as your personal savior today. There may be somebody else that says, you know, I've been looking for a church home. And I want to become a member of the Fulton Dale Church. If that is the case, just write it in the text, in the chat. I want to accept Christ. Or I want to become a member of this church. Jesus with one another people. The pastor and his staff will see it. They will pray for you. And they will reach out to you to affirm your decision. Let us bow our heads as we pray. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you, Jesus, for the word that you are near. Your presence is near. Your coming is near. You've showed us how to live in light of your soon coming. And you've promised us peace. We thank you and praise you. You've seen the hands of the, you've seen the decisions of those who want to accept you or to join. We ask, we thank you that heaven is rejoicing right now. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.